Accuracy is how close the measured, um, a measurement is to the true or accepted value. And what is it for precision? Precision is how the measurements are close to each other. That is correct. And in terms of a standard solution, you no. Know, right. Sodium carbonate is sometimes used as a primary standard, yet its molecular mass is only 84. There's three reasons why sodium carbonate is used as a primary standard. Tell me something about primary standard. Primary standard um, must, be, must be stable in the air. It must have a high relative molecular mass. Um, it must be soluble okay. in water and form uh, and form a standard solute. Yeah, it must be soluble in water. Um, it is. Uh, it must. Be, it is non-hygroscopic, meaning that it does not absorb moisture. Wonderful. And so you get to this part. It one reason why sodium hydroxide may not be used as a primary standard. That part it absorbs moisture. Remember, even in combustion analysis, we use it to absorb. We use it to absorb CO two, right? It can absorb moisture. I don't have to put that. If any of the reasons why sodium carbonate is a good primary standard. You can list it now that sodium hydroxide does not have any of those properties. It, it would not be able to be obtained in high purity, not stable in air. You can just, if you put up here, just write back one of them down here. All right, so a student, oh, by the way, this is 2021. As I said, the organic question for 2021, it was previously worked and uploaded on the channel. All right, so a student standardized a solution of sulfuric acid using sodium hydrogen carbonate as the primary standard and found the concentration of the acid to be five moles per dm cube. All right, so sodium hydrogen carbonate. When any form of equation that you're going to write, put state, put state symbols, or else, or else you will lose marks. All right, so sodium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid. And sodium hydrogen carbonate. All right, so it's sodium sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water. You're going to need a two in front of sodium carbonate, and you will need a two in front of water. Then it's a mass in grams of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. Calculate the mass in grams of the sodium hydrogen carbonate that the student neutralize the acid. If 23.5 CMQ of the acid were used from the beer. Right. This is what you will do. So to get the mass, so we know that mass is equal to mole times molar mass. But you don't have the molar sodium carbonate. So what you have to do is to find the mole of sulfuric acid because you have the concentration, you have the concentration of sulfuric acid 
and you have the volume of sulfuric acid. You multiply the two of them, you will get the number of moles. Unlikely to come, but I'm still, I'm just working it. All right, so the mole of H2SO4 equal to zero, no, five. Converted the same cube into DM cube. Yes, I think benzene is coming. It's been a long time. And so the answer for that, I will leave. All right, so once you have concentration and volume, you multiply the two of them, you will get the mole. Now, what you really want is the mole of sodium carbonate. You have to use molar ratio. So it's two mole of sodium carbonate to one mole of sulfuric acid. The mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate is 0 0.1175 times 2. And you get 0 0.235 mole. Once you get the mole, you can go ahead now and calculate the mass. Mass is mole times molar mass. 0 0.0, 0 0.235 times was it 84, you will get 19.74 grams. And so that is how you would get the mass. You have to guess from module two, IR, UV, gravimetry. Let me give my second to tell you my laptop. Let's see how much you do. 39 is enough. All right, let's come to the end. All right, so we're going to go to standard deviation calculation. So after conducting a titration, a student at the following title values. Now remember in a titration, you are going to use the closest of values. All right, so this cannot work, this can't work, this can't work. All right, titration, these values are not close. So these are the three values that you would use to calculate the, no, it's gravimetry. Please tell me more that. All right. So the question says, Determine the mean volume from the tighter values to be used in the calculation. 
So the mean volume is the average of volume, basically. And if you get that, you would say 22, 22, 25.25 plus 25.35 plus 25.30. Divided by three, and you should get twenty-five point three. So that is the average volume. All right, using the following equation, justify the choice of the tighter values selected. Basically, no. Basically, they're asking us to calculate the standard deviation. Okay, the standard deviation, the formula is there. So it is square root, the sum, of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus one. And x are the individual, individual measurements. X bar is the mean and n would be the number of measurements. I'm going to put trials, right? So the mean was 25.30. So I am going to take away the three readings that we used on the table. That would be 25.25. Take away 25.30. And we square it. All right, so this is what x minus x bar squared looks like. And the answer is 0 0.0025. We're going to do it again. The next reading 25.35. You're going to get 0 0.0025. We do it for the next reading. Now, outside of a titration, outside of a titration, you are doing standard de deviation, you will use all the values in the table. All right? Outside of a titration, you are going to use all the values in the table. We are we are selecting values just because it is titration. All right, so we have worked out x minus x bar for the three values that we used. Remember now, it must be the sum of x minus x bar. We are going to add them up now. All right, so step one, work out x minus x bar for all of the data points. Then you are going to work out the so, so 0 0.0025 plus 0 0.0025. I remember we all we all ready query plus zero. 0 0.005. N is the amount of trials. N is equal to three minus one because we use one, two, three data points, then it's two. So once you do that now, they're going to take the square root so it is now square root 0 0.005 divided by two. Final answer is 0 0.0. 
five. So they say use the following equation to justify the choice. So this is our standard deviation. It is extremely small, 0 0.05. It means that your readings were precise, very close to each other. Remember we said in a titration, we use values that are very close. But if this, if the standard deviation was say one or 1.5, those numbers, it would be high, all right? Even 0 0.5 is high, all right? Yeah, so the fact that it is 0 0.05, that is a very small value, which means that the, the readings that we used are very, So that is, is that. All right, so here's a government check. All right, so this type is, so remember you have precipitation and you have volatilization. All right, so this one is volatilization when you're trying to find out the water of crystallization. All right, so one, two gram of hydrated, Barium chloride. If it's hydrated, it has in water of crystallization. So if you heat the hydrated salt, you are going to remove the, the water from it, and then it will become anhydrous. Right? The anhydrous barium chloride is after you have heated it. It is now 0 0.522. In this calculation, the first thing we want to find is the mass of water that was given off. They already give you the mass of the anhydrous barium chloride. So in this calculation, we use the mass of anhydrous barium chloride and the mass of water that was lost. So to get the mass of water that was lost, you subtract anhydrous from the hydrated. And you should get 0 0.09. Right. So you have the mass of water, you have the, the mass of anhydrous barium chloride. What I'm going to do now is similar to empirical formula. Barium chloride and water. We're going to work out the moles of barium chloride and water. Remember, you are using the anhydrous one. So 0 0.522 divided by here is it? One second. 208 and 0 0.09 divided by 18. And this is what no, 0 0.0025. This is 0 0.005. Well, if you get the calculation of this, the Moles of this of the salt must be smaller than water. If not, you're doing something incorrect. This is one and this is two. So the formula is BACL2 plus 
H2O. We have two moles of water in the cell. All right, and that is how you would do it. All right, this is our precipitation one. I did not remember to add it to this. I'm just going to work it in this empty section. It's from 2018. So we have a sample of KCL. And the mass of the sample is 0 0.45 We react it with excess, excess silver nitrate. The precipitate of silver chloride has a mass of 0 0.8402. So remember in precipitation gravimetry, right? So let's say you have your solution of KCL, you are going to add a precipitating reagent. In this case, the silver nitrate. Precipitating reagent is so that you can get a precipitate. All right. So you mix, you filter, you wash, and dry. In a way, you add your precipitated reagent to this solution, you will get a precipitate. You filter, you wash the residue, allow it to dry, and then you wait. That is the procedure for precipitation gravimetry. In terms of the calculation, the first thing you will work out is the mole of the work of the mole of your precipitate. So the mass of the precipitate is 0 0.8402. And the precipitate is silver chloride. Silver, it should be 143.5. And so, how much that is? Zero point zero zero five nine. So step one, work out the moles of precipitate. Step two, your equation. So in this case, it is KCL with silver nitrate. I'm going to get silver chloride and potassium nitrate. One to one mole ratio between silver nitrate and potassium nitrate. Sorry. So three. You want the mole ratio between your precipitate and the analyte. The analyte is whichever compound are ion that you are analyzing. In this case, you want the mole ratio between KCL and the precipitate of silver chloride. So it is one to one. It means that the mole 
of KCL is 0 0.0059. Once I work out the mole of it, we are going to, con we are going to work out the mass of KCL. So the molar mass of KCL is 74.5. 0 0.4, 0 0.44 gram. All right, now the percentage is the mass of the compound that you calculate so zero mass of the compound over mass of the sample times a hundred. Whenever you want the percentage, oh, so the question I asked you for the percentage purity of KCL. So it was an impure sample of KCL and they wanted the percentage purity. So for percentage, it is the mass of the compound they calculate over the mass of the sample times a hundred. Ninety-eight percent. So this is an example of precipitation gravimetry. They don't have to ask you for the percentage purity. You could be asked to calculate concentration. If you are asked to calculate concentration, then they would have given you a volume, all right? So instead of giving you the mass of the sample, they could have said a 25 milliliter solution and ask in that instance, once you have the mole, you would put it over the volume. No, I'm not going to go over back titration, but there are videos on the channel about titration. All right, so that is it for precipitation gravimetry. This is a regular for this step. So to determine the ethan noic acid content of a particular brand of vinegar, a sample of the vinegar was titrated. So they're asking you for a titration. All right, so as I said, I will post the answers to this. I'm just going, I'm going to write these